This is my first foray into the magic flute. And for a director, it's a piece that is very open. So it's a gift in that way. It has so many layers. It can be taken in many, many different directions. The performance space at Garsington is obviously unique, uh, unlike any other. So in the design, um, I have uh, been very keen to uh, include our external environment. So in a way, the garden continues onto the stage. Uh, I'm interested in the idea of facades, of these um, very beautiful historical manor houses that very rarely now exist as uh, family houses. They quite often have all kinds of things going on behind the facade. One of the reasons for having this stone facade is also to reflect a little bit on the imagery of Freemasonry, which is obviously very beautiful imagery. The experience of going to this particular uh, venue is a treat in that way. You're in an, an incredible landscape and, um, you know, I think it, it's nice to carry that feeling into the into the theatre space itself. I've worked with Nisha for uh, 20 years, it makes me feel very old. I love working with Nisha as well as being very good friends. She has a fantastic lightness of touch, but she also knows when to put on the heartstrings as well. I think she's, I think she's gonna actually discover something new in the piece. For me, there is no separation between the musical and the, um, the visual. I am interested in this history of Freemasonry um, because of its links to, uh, to the actual uh, venue. And also because, as Christian points out, it is deeply embedded in this music. And when you start to sift through uh, th this aspect, it's very rewarding, it becomes even richer. The opera itself begins with three loud, powerful chords. Uh, and that's Mozart showing us his link into Freemasonry from the very beginning uh, because these three chords uh, represent the three knocks that begin any Masonic ritual. He sets the overture in E flat major which has three flats so he's really uh, nailing his colours to the post from the very beginning. And then the other piece which melts my heart every time I hear it is the duet between uh, Pamina and Papageno uh, where they say they talk about the wonders of a married life and it's so simple and so direct that it's, it just has this extraordinary uh, uh, effect on me. I mean, we have an incredible cast. The casting process has been a joy from beginning to end. There's pure expertise on every level. I was very, very keen for there to be a real relationship, a mother-daughter relationship between the Queen of the Night and Pamina. We have just two phenomenal singers for these roles. Not only are they incredible musicians, both of them, but they have this depth of character already that they bring before we've even started rehearsal. And the same is true of, of uh, all of the other characters in the piece. We have a, you know, an exceptional Tamino. I think our heart will, will go out to him. It can't help but. So we um, start rehearsals in the end of April uh, and we have five weeks in the room, I think. Um, and that's a wonderful gift. You can leave yourself room for exploration of the music because you have this long rehearsal time. Well, I'm just looking forward to working with such a great orchestra. And I can hear that they play in very different styles, which is wonderful. The style they played Cozy in was very different, different to the style that they played Domineo. Um, and that's great that they obviously respond to different conductors and what they're asking. I'm keen to keep the playful and um, lighter elements in the Magic Flute. It is um, imaginary and it is fun. And uh, we, are, we are planning on a little bit of an excursion outside of the performance space itself. There will be uh, one or two minor interventions which uh, may, may surprise the audience as they come through.